guys welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for stopping by so today if you have first time if it's your first time to stop by please consider hitting the subscribe button and remember to turn on the notification bell too so that you're the very first person to get notified and to my returning subscribers thank you so much i always appreciate all of you and it don't take you for granted thank you so much for your great support so guys in today's video we're gonna be seeing this video about white supremacy and whiteness what is white supremacy and whiteness does it mean that the white people they originated from the european continent so let's go straight and let's roll on into this video i'm gonna be catching you at the end of the video with my comments y'all i found something and y'all gonna have to sit down for this because this is crazy so I started going down this rabbit hole trying to figure out the true population of the white race in the U.S. That is what you guys have been putting into question in the comments of my last video. Also, make sure you go check out my last video if you haven't already. I found something even more questionable, y'all. Let me read to you the definition of white race on census, the census website. White. A person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. What? So when I read the race definition, the white race definition on the census website, I immediately thought about Egypt being a part of North Africa. So they still trying to sit here and say that Egyptians are white? So I've been reading this book, right? Highly recommended y'all, but let's look at something real quick. Alright, so prior to the Greek use of the word Egypt, Africans referred to their land as Kemet, that is, the black land. Kemet was the strongest term used by the ancients in pharaonic times to indicate blackness. It literally meant coal black, y'all. The name which the people of Kemet called themselves was Kimiyu, which literally translate as the blacks. So somebody make this make sense because this definition of the white race on census is not adding up. And that could also be why the white race population on the census website could be skewed because they're adding a bunch of individuals in the white race category that ain't got no business being there. So when you look at these numbers, for example, go to that second table where it says non-Hispanic or la Latino. Basically, they're, they're just taking account of the white alone population without Hispanics or Latino. So if you see in 2020, if you go down to that second table where it says white only, that says 57.8%. And based off of this definition, y'all, I feel like it could be much lower than that. Like, this is crazy. peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. So I'm currently in the process of moving and I just had to stop and take a moment to to stitch this because yeah she definitely pointed out something. And this is also my time to remind people of how whiteness is a disease and a social construct made up to keep us all separate. And I don't know if a lot of people remember, but whiteness, the, the, the concept was created by, you know, the elite in order to keep the poor people from raising up against them. So they wanted to, you know, separate and elevate certain ones, certain groups, just so that way they can maintain order. And whiteness is ever changing, ever changing, because again, it's a social construct. And whenever they feel like they are losing people, or that the opposite the, or the people they are trying to oppress or gain control is gaining more numbers, they will immediately change what is whiteness. For example, a good example of this is the Italians. A lot of you time, most times when I talk to Italians, they'll be like, I'm not white, I'm Italian. And this is because, this, this is because once upon a time when Italians first came over, they weren't considered white. As a matter of fact, they were kind of clumped in and considered black. However, once, you know, with all of them coming over and immigrating and us, you know, being in the same neighborhoods and stuff, you know, we started getting more numbers and immediately they switched it. And so Italians were welcomed into whiteness and many Italians like accepted that and they still benefit from that. And now I don't know if you guys remember, but remember last year there was a school that was, you know, designating Asians as white as well. And it just goes back to whenever they need 
um, to be able to control, to be able to have the numbers. They will switch up the definitions so that they can welcome certain types of people in to whiteness. And it's crazy too, because I remember as a child learning about Egypt, it was very much like this is this is black people, it's in Africa, black, like there was no denying it, no debates. However, now there are some times where they will call themselves either Middle Eastern, they won't even consider themselves African. Sometimes some of them call themselves white. Like it's really been mixed up because they have been welcomed into whiteness. I think the same thing happened with Algeria, I, I fully remember. So this is just an, a good time. Like with this whole Roe versus Wade is literally dripping in white supremacy. And it's really just, it's crazy because everybody's suffering it. But this is what black women was trying to warn everybody about. This is what we were talking about. That white supremacy doesn't just affect black people. White supremacy affects everybody who is not rich white male. So remember this, be conscious of this as you're watching everything that unfolds because the definition will change again, sure as hell, best believe it will. If you actually thought white privilege exists, then mixed people would be clinging onto the Caucasian side like their life depended on. And they have. If, if you put forth any effort, if you spend any time looking, you will find dozens, hundreds, thousands of stories of people of mixed race descent strategically using whiteness in order to survive. For instance, the story of the novelist Kelly McWilliams, who describes herself as a light-skinned black woman. Two years ago, she described for time the single moment that she decided to pass for white. She was in a hospital giving birth and she checked off the white box because she knows about the negative outcomes associated with black women in hospitals. And because her own mother had the wrong baby given to her when McWilliams was born, owing to the fact that she had such light skin. But that strategic deployment of white privilege comes at a cost. It comes at a personal cost that there are many people who are far more qualified to speak about on here than I am. It comes at a political cost too, because it reinforces white supremacy when we need to be tearing it down. Just remember, anytime somebody says only white people can be racist, all you have to do is respond with one question. Says who? Hello, my name is Dr. Cruz. I'm a professor that researches and teaches about matters of race, media, and society, as well as rhetoric and persuasion, and I'm excited to go through this video with you. Only white people can be racist. Says who? Who says that? Who the f said that? So let's start with this premise, this idea that there are people who are saying that only white people can be racist. Is that a sentiment that is out there in the world? Sure. The people who believe that are folks that are not well informed about how racism operates. It is generally accepted within critical race scholarship that anyone can be racist if they align themselves with racist institutions of power. That is not a controversial statement. What I find interesting about this argument is that coming from someone who is overtly against anti-racism, addressing this subject matter on his show elevates the visibility of this argument to make it seem like this is a common and widely held belief among people who are anti-racist. You do, but where are you getting that from? I do, because I'm a critical race scholar and I've never made this claim. Why should I accept your definition of racism? I understand that that's your claim, that's your belief, but why should I give a damn? Why should I believe it? Oh, you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to people like Patricia Hill Collins, Dorothy Roberts, Kimberly Crenshaw, Lisa Flores, Eduardo Benio Silva, Thomas Nakayama, or a whole list of people that I could go on and on about, but only if you're interested in intellectual honesty, and I'm concerned that may not be the case here. I guess if you want to follow up with another question, you could also ask this. Did racism exist a thousand years ago, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago? Nope. Our modern conceptualization of race didn't really solidify until roughly the 17th and 18th centuries, uh, mostly having to do with the laws surrounding the enslavement of Africans and the presence in the Americas, as well as pseudoscientific efforts to explain race. That being said, the earliest origins of our concept of race go back to the mid to late 15th century, having to do with the European enslavement of Africans and their export across the world. Did it exist in ancient times? Did racism exist back when people were slaughtering and enslaving outsiders just as a matter of course? Again, no. Humans have always found ways to divide ourselves from each other, whether it was along lines of national identity or ethnicity, tradition, cultural practices, religion, what have you, but they could not divide themselves according to an idea that did not exist at that time. If, if racism is inherent to white people, this is an interesting rhetorical sleight of hand because the premise of the video is that only white people could be racist, but that is not the same thing as saying that racism is inherent to white people as though there's something about having fair skin that intrinsically ties you to racism devoid of context. Because of their systemic power, that it must mean that racism didn't exist before white people as we know them now existed or before they had this kind of power. So close.
go back through history, you find that the most powerful empires back in ancient times were in places like Egypt and Mesopotamia. Was there no racism then? Once again, for the people in the cheap seats, no. There are other ways to create social stratification and maintain an articulated underclass of laborers, but race was not existent at that time. Was it an anti-racist utopia, which just so happened to subsist on slavery and conquest? And this is another interesting rhetorical side of hand, because the idea here is that if there was no racism, then they must have been anti-racist. However, in order to be anti-racist, racism has to exist, and it did not at that point. Furthermore, this idea that anti-racism coexisted in this utopic society alongside exploitation and enslavement is the real point of this message. This idea that anti-racism or diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts are going to inevitably lead to the subjugation and exploitation of another group of people, in this case heavily implied to be white folks, is a decades-old white nationalist talking point that holds no credibility at all. Elite universities are blacklisting white, middle-class Christian people. So I see points like this being made quite often um, by white men of all ages complaining about being blacklisted from opportunities and schools and jobs and things like that um, because the opportunities are going to lesser black and brown people or lesser women, right? But never once do these people have any internal reflection on the fact that maybe you just were never that good right maybe the reason why you received any opportunities that you were receiving was because of your propensity for violence and maintaining power structures through that violence and oppressing other people right so like i have an mba from one of the top business schools in the world and while i was in business school i would often look around coming from an impoverished community being black at the predominant white men around me and i'd be like is this it Right. Like is like is this the competition? Because this isn't competition. Right. Like you have been forged in mediocrity. You were the ones who were never good enough. Right. Like even now, as as an author, a best selling author, I look around oftentimes and I'm like, man. The marginalized people are just better working harder learning more, honing their craft, because we've had to. We haven't had mediocrity be the standard for us. You have. And now that mediocrity is no longer the standard, you're complaining that opportunities are going to lesser people when you were always the lesser people. There we go, guys. White supremacy and whiteness. Does it mean that any white person falls under the category of a white person or whiteness. For example, we've had even Egyptians. Egypt, we know, is an African country. But the people there, the majority of the people there are white people. What does this tell us about whiteness? Whiteness is just a race. It's not something to do with the color or your ethnicity, but whiteness is going with race, white supremacy. You'll find that a lot of people are using white supremacy to benefit from several things. For example, if a black person goes to an employment agency or a company that is dominated by white people, he or she is not sure whether he's going to get that same job or that employment. But if it's a white person going there, he or she is very 100% sure he's going to be offered the job. And like even, for example, when you go to the restaurants, for example, Hispanic restaurants, white restaurants, majority there are the white people. And this is what we call white supremacy. When you go there as a black person, you are just downlooked. They don't take you as someone, a human being. They prefer the white people. So guys, thank you so much. Let me know your take on this regarding the whiteness and white supremacy in the comment section. And let's catch up next time for another Z reaction. Bye-bye.